six and welcome to Tuesday's literacy lesson. So today is our last um, lesson on the sea turtles text. Okay, so you've done retrieval, you've done inference. I was really impressed with your answers to the inference questions. You have tried really, really hard with them. Some of them are really tricky and there's lots of high level vocabulary in there, so well done. Okay, so our final then one today is looking at word meaning, some summary questions and some prediction. Okay, so word meaning questions can be really tricky because it relies on you knowing what the word means. So you've got to use the rest of the sentence. So I would like you to avoid actually looking the word up and try and use the sentence. So I've given you a couple of examples to get started with. So I've got here, so this is a word meaning question. So I've got at this stage, they are highly vulnerable to predators. So you'll have one of two things to look at today. So it might be that you've got to tick an answer that means similar or it might be what you've got to explain what it means in that sentence, okay? So similar strategies for both, apart from the first one's a little bit easy because you've got some options. So for example, your very first question here, so we're on page 20, it asks you what, what the word evade means and you've got to pick one of these. And the tricky thing is that sometimes they all make sense. And then you've all, then these ones, you've got, what does it tell you? And then this, this one is find and copy a word that's, that means the same. And then the final one, what does it mean within the sentence? Okay, so it's all using similar strategies. Okay, so for this one then, at this stage, there are, they, ha, they are highly vulnerable to predators. Okay, so if I was asked what that meant, what is the meaning of that word in the sentence? So I've got to use what it says. So I've got the word predators. Now that's a word I know. I know that predators attack their prey. Okay, so it says it highly means very, and then I've got vulnerable. So I've got, they are highly vulnerable to predators. So if they have got a predator coming after them, then it means that they are in danger. Okay, so I think that vulnerable means that they are highly in danger, they are exposed. Exposed means where they can be seen really easily. Um, so I think that it means that they are exposed and in danger. Okay, so then the next one then that I've given you as an example is unfortunately a huge number of discarded plastic bags find their way into the world's oceans every year. So I'm going to use a little bit of my background knowledge here. So I know that lots and lots of plastic bags are bought. Um, they are, they're, they're thrown away. People don't reuse them. So I'm going to think about, so unfortunately, a huge number of discarded plastic bags. I mean, I think that means that they're not, they're no longer needed. They're put to one side, they're thrown aside. Okay, so if I was asked what that meant, that's what I would say. Sometimes you might be asked for another word that means this. So unfortunately, a huge number of discarded plastic bags. Now, I've just said that I think that that means thrown away. Um, so I'm going to say that I would use left. So unfortunately, a huge number of left plastic bags or disused plastic bags or unused plastic bags find their way into the world's oceans every year. Okay, so you've got to use, sometimes it's your knowledge, Sometimes it's the rest of the sentence, like on this one, I used that I knew what predators meant, okay, to work out what that word means. So we'll have a little look at the questions with you, okay? So the first one, like I said, you've got to tick the one that you think means evade. So use the sentence, so those which manage to evade these dangers can live. So think, they've carried on living, okay? So they not been a victim to the dangers so they've managed to carry on living so hopefully that will help you okay so they eat a varied diet of marine produce what does the word vary tell you about the longer heads diet okay so think you might know what very varied variation means okay and it's talking about their diet what they eat if that what they eat is varied what does it tell you about their diet okay so the next one then, you've got to look at a paragraph and find one word. So remember, on this line here, there should only be one word. 
Okay, so question four, still on the word meaning questions. So it asks you to, what did the word severe means in the sentence? Okay, so you've got the sentence above here. So tragically, these extraordinary creatures are now facing severe threats to their existence. Okay, so remember you are reading round the word severe to help you work out what it means. Okay, so you know what threats are. So a threat to somebody is something that endangers them. Now, that's your noun, and you've got a, severe is the adjective describing the noun. So you know also from this sentence that it's tragic, it's awful, it's sad. So it must be quite serious. Okay, so read the sentence again, thinking about those words. So tragically, these extraordinary creatures are now facing severe threats to their existence. So it's an extra bit about the word threat. It's saying it's a severe threat. Okay, so what does the word severe mean in that sentence? Okay, so make sure you use your knowledge of other words in the sentence to help you. Okay, so then the next question. Now we have done questions like this before um, in class. So it's where you've got little bits of the text, little summaries. So a little summary about a paragraph. So it's like a paragraph title. And then it asks you to put them in the order that they appear in the text. Okay, so the first one's done for you, so a general introduction to sea turtles. Now, please, please don't try and guess from remembering reading the text. Don't try and guess which order it is in. Okay, you need to go back to the text. Okay, now remember the strategies that we've used. So find each of these in the text and put a little star next to them. Okay, so I have done that already to help you. So go make sure you go back to the text. Do not do that one without going back. Now this one is number one. So this is your general. The one that's already done for you. Okay. Now the next one then is how and where baby loggerhead sea turtles hatch. So I've found that part in the text and I've put a little star next to it. But I've also put a note to remind me that that star is about them hatching. Okay, then the next one is how artificial light affects baby loggerhead sea turtles. Okay, so I've found that bit and I've put a star and I've put light to remind me. And I've put a star and a little reminder next to all of them. I don't want to go through all of them with you. Okay, so once I've put all my stars on, I then need to number them. So I've got my star, that's the first one, general. The next star that I come across is here and I've put my little note to remind me what it is. So once I've numbered them in the text, I can use my notes to put the numbers in the side here. So it's similar to ones that we have done before. Okay, so you make sure you use that strategy, go back to the text, find all of the events, then number them on your text, and then finally, that's the very final step, is to fill this bit in. Okay, if you try and do it without doing all the bits before, then you'll get mixed up, okay? Right, so the last one then is a prediction question. Now, this is very much your opinion, okay? And that's absolutely fine, so there's no right or wrong answer to this. What's really important about it is that you give evidence for your opinion, okay? So it says, based on the text, do you think things will get better or worse for loggerhead sea turtles in the future? Explain your answer. Okay, so you'll see that I've ticked better there. We'll come back to that in a minute. But what I did to make my decision was went through the text and found some positive and negative things for the sea turtles. Okay, so you'll see that I've highlighted them. Okay, so I've highlighted some positive and negative. You might want to do it in a different colour. Okay, so some negative things I've put that they're facing severe threats to their existence. Human development's not he helping them, such as roads and houses, stop them from coming ashore, they get caught in fishing nets, get, they collide with boats, people are discarding plastic bags. So all of those things are negatives and give an idea that, that things are probably going to get worse for them. However, they've also found some other bits that are positive. So I've got, try, there's, there's um individuals and organisations that are trying to protect them. Um, there's some examples. They're trying to reduce the amount of artificial light, um, different methods to help the young turtles. There's projects all around the world. Conservationists are hoping that efforts will help them. So there's lots and lots of things as well that are positive. So I chose to tick better. 
okay? So it's not enough to say that you think that they'll be better because it's a three mark question. So you need to give the evidence. So my first bit of evidence, remember it's a three mark question, I need to develop this answer fully. So I've got, I think this, so I think this, I think it's going to be better because it says there are organisations trying to help. Okay, so I might then give an example of something to do that they are doing to help. So for example, trying to reduce artificial light. So you can see that I'm developing my answer. I'm using evidence from the text to support why I think things are going to get better. Okay, so that is the end of that reading text for, for this week. Um, we'll be moving on to a different one tomorrow. Think really carefully about all the tips and hints that I've given you. Okay, so once you've done that, so you can pause now, have a go at all of that, and then you can work, work move on to your word power work. Okay, so today... We're going to be looking at page 20 and it's all about this bias. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so it's all to do with vocabulary, vocabulary, a little bit linked to your reading text today about positive and negative vocabulary. Okay, so positive and negative vocabulary have an influence on the reader because they're emotive. Okay, so they get an emotion going in the reader. So you've got some words are really negative and some words are really positive and some are neutral. That means they're not really positive or negative. So it gives the example here of the word young. It's neutral. It just describes how old something is. Okay, but you could have negative words like immature and babyish. So they're quite negative words for someone being young. But you could have positive words like youthful or budding. Okay, so they're more of a positive slant on the word young. Okay, so it asks you then, it gives you another example. So the opposite of young and old. The neutral word is old. Okay, that's neither positive or negative. It's just a fact. Something is old. Okay, but then your negative word then is rusty. Okay, you might have aged, something like that. But then a positive word might be antique because people think that antiques are really valuable. So then it asks you for another example here. So small, you've got to give a negative word for small. Okay, so it might even be like a little insult. And then a positive word for small. So something that makes put small like, sound like a good thing. Okay, so it says here again that positive or negative words give a spin for the reader and then they're called emotive words. Okay, so you can have a whole text that can be positive or negative or neutral. So it asks you here which of these is neutral so it doesn't give loads of words that are really positive and it doesn't give loads of words which are really negative it just gives the facts okay so that's your neutral one so have a read of these okay so like in this one for example b it says be overrun with flashy smug golfers they're not really very positive words okay so have a look and see which one you think is neutral so then the next part is using this bit from page 20 okay and it asks you to so when it, it, something is overly positive or overly negative so really really positive or really really negative we say it's bias okay so you've got to choose one of these texts here and circle whether it's bias for, for the golf course so for a golf course being there or against a golf course and then write the emotive words so for example if i picked this one it's saying that the village will be overrun that means it's going to be absolutely covered by flashy smug golfers so i would pick overrun and i'd pick flashy and smug okay i'd pick disaster because that's designed for the reader to think this is a really bad thing defenseless again it's making it sound like a really really bad thing it's really negative Okay, then it asks you who the text might be written by. Okay, and then this last little bit, okay, is a little bit of fun for you, it says. So now this might be tricky at the moment because it asks you to think of an event that you've been to recently. Now that's quite tricky at the moment because we haven't really been anywhere recently. However, it does say a school trip. Now we all went on a school trip together last year to Bliss Hill. So it asks you to write a couple of sentences to describe it. So first, being really, really positive, you've got to cast your minds back now. You might be able to think of your own trip, but that's just an example if you can't think of one. 
And then the next one, really, really, really negative. So if I was really positive about it, I might be saying something like amazing and interesting historical trip. If I was being really, really negative, I might say something like awful, boring, and a complete waste of time. Okay, so you can see how this side is really, really positive, and this side is really, really negative. Okay, so. Any words that we might hear, and lots of us might be looking at the news at the moment, might be biased in some way. So it asks you what you should be thinking when you're listening to people or reading what they've written. So have a think what's really important when you're listening to stuff on the news or reading stuff in a newspaper or reading stuff on social media, what you need to remember, thinking about everything that you've learned today. Okay, then the final bit, what does it mean when we say a text is biased? So use this today. Okay, that's to show me what you've learned from today's work. Okay, really looking forward to reading everything that you've put on this piece of work. Um, keep up the fantastic work that I've seen over the last few days. Um, and any questions, make sure you get in touch.